Good morning, family. Happy Sunday, and thank you for joining us on Amazing TV. We have a treat for you, so get a cup of coffee, grab the family, and let's have a good time. Yes, grab the kiddos and everyone in the house. Over the next hour, we're going to worship and hear an awesome word from Pastor Derek. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from. Subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram. Now, do us a favor, share this broadcast. And if you'd like, start a watch party. Let everyone know that we're going live. Be sure to comment and share. Are you ready? Because, because we're, we're going, going live in, in three, two, one. one.
gonna let, yeah. you're never gonna <laughs> let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. See, you're never, you're never never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never, you're never gonna let, no, you won't. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Listen, I know you're watching and you're going, wow, that was impactful. And, and just go ahead and take the moment and worship him. He's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Our hearts long to sing to him because he's worthy. And we give him glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Give him glory for it. Hallelujah. We're here in, and you see that we are in a, a different set. We're in a different position because we wanted to make sure that we gave you something that could really encourage you along the way. As things continue to develop and things continue to change day by day, moment by moment, we want to make sure that you understand that you have an anchor that holds and that anchor is in the Lord. And so we're going to continue. We're going to continue here in our series, Trapped in Home Ed. And we're going to continue. The music is going to play continuously. We're going to worship continuously. So you don't want to leave this spot. God is going to say something incredible to you. Uh, today's lesson, I'm going to talk about shelter in peace. Not just shelter in place, but shelter in peace. Uh, I was on a phone call with my staff. And, and we went around the room, around the horn on our Zoom call. And we're asking people, you know, what's going on? What's going on in your life? How are you doing? How are things going in your household? And then at the end, my wife was also on the call, and, and she asked me this question. She says, Pastor, you've asked everybody else, what about you? And so I had to sit back in my chair, and when I leaned back in my chair, I really said, you know what, I'm just going to be transparent with you. It's been a little tough here periodically. 
Not that something is bad, not something is going bananas, but, you know, I just had different thoughts. I, I felt like I wasn't doing enough. I was being not, I wasn't being busy enough. I wasn't doing anything. It just felt weird. And, and then for a moment also, for a moment in that same week, I felt anxiety. And I was like, wow, I, I've never really... I've never really felt that before in that way. Uh, I was anxious. I, I didn't know what was going to happen next, and, and I didn't know how long we were going to be doing this. And so here I was in a moment. It was just a moment, and anxiety jumped on top of me. And I don't think that I'm the only one here. I think that I'm talking to somebody who's watching right now, and, and you had the same moment too. It was, may have not been in the fourth week, but it may have been in the first week or the second or the third but you did have that moment of anxiety. And, and I believe that this statement hits home for many of you because when you really think about it, you're wondering what should I do or what should I be doing and what's going to happen next and how am I going to handle this? And so when I look at scripture, the objective of our lesson is to help and encourage families and your family during this, these uncertain times and, in for, and for some, a painful time. But God be the glory if we just sing a little louder in the presence of our enemy, we'll be able to sing over the top of all this that's going on. And I want you to know that this lesson is going to help you. And, and so I look at a passage of scripture. I believe that God has something in our scripture that can help us, the Holy Scriptures that can help us. It may not be the exact same situation, but it is nonetheless an example of what we're facing. Uh, this passage starts after we see Jesus uh, and he talks to uh, this smart lawyer who wants to justify uh, that he loves his neighbor. Jesus told him he answered correctly. And then he says, but who is my neighbor? Jesus then tells him the story of, this was parable. He tells him the parable, the story of the Good Samaritan. And as he gets to the end of that story, he says, now go and do likewise. And then all of a sudden, it just snuck in there in Luke, the 10th chapter, verse 38. Parenthetically, there's a story about a lady named Martha. I mean, it's just stuck in there. It, it, it doesn't have anything to do with what comes afterwards because then afterwards, Jesus begins to tell the disciples the model of prayer. And before that, like I just told you, he's telling, he's telling the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and, and whoever the C's are, he's telling them about a parable. And then he sticks Martha in there. Let's take a look and see if this, if this it really reaches you because we can see from the text that this was sort of like we are, <laughs> sheltered in place, yet unlike us, being mandated by our government, Martha was doing it voluntarily. Let's look at it. Luke, the 10th chapter in verse 38 through 42, it says, now it happened. Uh, for some of you, now it had happened. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted. Can y'all say distracted? Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Martha is in a situation. She, sh she appears to have her stuff together and a lot of stuff going on. Mary appears to be chilling at the feet of Jesus. But Martha got some stuff going on in her heart. And she's leaning not to her own understanding uh, or, or the understanding that, that the Lord gives, but she's leaning to her own understanding. And, and so Martha has something that is etched in her heart. And we need to deal with that which is in our heart. Because here's the truth. If Martha's got something that's, that she's dealing with in her heart, and out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart will speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Then, if my tongue is the pen of a ready writer, then I need to get my heart right so that I'll be able to speak right, so that I'll be in the presence where I need to be. Get this. Martha has to get her heart right. Listen, can y'all help me help Martha get her heart right? Come on, y'all. Let's worship some more. Come on. Hallelujah.
trusting and depending on your word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Through every situation, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm depending on you, Jesus. I will hide your word in a heart. I will hide your word in your heart. My goodness, my goodness. Come on, I, listen, let me see the hearts. Let me see them. Come on. Come on, let me see him. Let me see him. Y'all thought we were done with that song? We're not done with that song. Come on, y'all. Trust in the Lord. Come on, y'all. Come on. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. to our own understanding. But let's pick apart and see what happened to Martha because I believe we can find it in these passages of scripture. Can y'all agree with me on this though? That sometimes that leaning to your own understanding, you put yourself in that position. You get yourself wrapped up in all that's going on. Remember I told you it was just a moment of anxiety, but man, it could have lasted a lot longer. And so it was with Martha. She was in this situation where she put herself in this situation. How do you know that? Because when we look at scripture, it says that in verse 39 and 40 through A, it says that Martha was distracted. She was distracted. Verse 39 says, it says, and she had a sister called Mary and Mary was also there. And, and Mary sat at the, seat, at the feet of Jesus. Like I told you, she was chilling at his feet. She sat at the feet of Jesus. And then it says, and Martha was distracted. Now, that word in the Greek means that she was taken away by thoughts. She was drawn out from it. How many times have we been in the presence of the Lord and been distracted? How many times have have you been with somebody sitting next to you and they're getting something? You're wondering, hey, I'm not getting the same thing. It was the same thing here with Martha. Martha was in the same place with the same Jesus and the same Lord. And Mary was worshiping at his feet, but Martha was busy, distracted. She had a lot of busyness going on. Distracted to the point that it led to busyness, doing something just to be doing something. That's what she was doing, just something to be doing something. She, she actually she actually was putting on a mask. Mm-hmm. See, this is what happened. Martha, Martha put on a mask. Now, uh, y'all, 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 y'all stay with me because I'm going to put my microphone inside of the mask. Well, I'm going to cover up this much. Y'all, y'all can hear me, all right? So, so Martha had a, a mask on. She had, she was, when we put a mask on, sometimes we have a mask on to mask our pain. We don't know what Martha was dealing with, but she could have been masking her pain. We, we put a mask on to mask our anger. Martha was ma- already mad at Mary, so she put a mask on to get busy. She was busy even though she was still mar- mad at Mary. Uh, another mask was a mask of resentment. She felt like she was doing all the work and Mary wasn't doing anything. Don't you tell Mary to do something with herself, just lay it up there on your feet. We, we put a mask on of loneliness. We, we get busy. It's a mask. We're busy, but we're lonely. We're around a whole bunch of people, but we're lonely. We can't figure out why I'm having fun, I'm laughing, but yet I still feel lonely. She also had a mask of laziness. Sometimes we put a mask on of busyness to cover up our laziness. 
We look like we're busy, but the truth is we're doing everything except for what we're supposed to be doing. Laziness. And then finally, a mask of, of anxiousness. Martha put on a mask. Let me get this mask off. The next thing that we see in verse number 40, we see that Martha was complaining. She said, Lord, tell Mary to do something. You see, I'm about the business of the Lord. I'm, I'm doing all this work. I'm serving. But Mary's not doing anything. She was complaining. Everybody say complaining. 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 Let me ask this question. While you have been sheltered in place, have you been complaining about being sheltered in place? Have you been the one that's complaining and, and making sure that everybody know how upset you are? You, you pull out your phone and all of a sudden you text everybody. I can't even believe they got me stuck in here. They must got me bent. I got to get out of here. No, uh-uh, uh-uh, I can't believe it. What y'all doing? <laughs> C complaining. You pull out your phone and, and you're complaining. You're faced with yourself and you make everybody else the reason why you're trapped. Y'all got me here. It's the government that has me here. Who, who told them to go over and get corona and bring it back over here? Who did that? Complaining about where you are. Why am I here? Why is my life like this? You, you're adding compiling on the situation. Complaining about why is this happening at all? Why is this even happening at all? And you're a conspiracy theorist. You're trying to figure out where did it come from? It came out of a lab. No, it came from a bat. No, it never came from a bat. It actually came from another place. You're, you're complaining and spending more time complaining than you are looking at what Mary is doing. Complaining why you act the way you act. You make that somebody else's fault. If it wasn't for Mary, I wouldn't be complaining, Jesus. If you just tell her what to do, if you tell her to come on and help me fix these, these, uh, these salmon croquettes, I bet you what, things would be better. Come on, y'all, like y'all had salmon croquettes before. And then, then you complain about what you don't have. Everybody else got their stimulus check, but not me. Complaining. Complaining. So, so Martha was busy, busy, busy. She was complaining and complaining. And then Martha, in verse number 42, we see that Martha was unfulfilled because we see that you have, you have Martha with so much on her mind. Jesus says, Martha, Martha. Whenever something is said twice, it's established in Scripture. So what Jesus was going to say after he called Martha's name, he was telling her, this is what's really going on. He says, Martha, 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 you miss the one thing that is important. You're doing everything, but you miss the chosen thing, the good part. When, when all this is said and done, well, what would your busyness have gotten you? When all this is said and done, what would your complaining have gotten you? When you get to this place of being unfulfilled, you have to fill it with something. And you will either fill it the right way or you will fill it the wrong way. And the wrong way where we fill it is with the three demons that are still left. The lust of the flesh. That's where you're, you're craving. You're, you're, you're eating everything. Anything that's not tied down, you're getting it lust of the flesh you 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 want so much and then there's the lust of the eye whoa the lust of the eye that that's the imaginations that that's things that, are, that you're daydreaming and and now your lust is has got you going and scrolling and scrolling and hitting and then expanding and closing and hoping nobody saw you lust 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 fills the place of the wandering mind. Lust fills the place and where you've given the enemy room instead of being about the thing that's most important, you spent time busy. You spent time complaining and dealing with the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and then the pride of life. You want what everybody else has. You're watching people on Instagram Live and Facebook Live. You, you're watching them put on shows and, and you're looking inside their house and you're going, shoot, I wish my house was like that. You even got a fake backdrop up so nobody knows what your house looks like. Coveting. Coveting, lust, the, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Martha was consumed with other thoughts when the great thing, the most important thing, was right there in front of her. And in order to deal with these sheltered in place moments, we're going to have to go back to our home ed. Remember, trapped in home ed? Home ed has one part of the course which is called the home maintenance. Everybody say maintenance. Maintenance. Maintenance is this part of home ed, this part of this class was responsible for you to design and create the atmosphere of the ambiance in the home. My goodness. You get listen, 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 stay focused, focus. Listen, this part was the part where you set up your house. This is where you settle in with what God has decided was going to be your case. What is God has put in your place, what God has given you in your hand. You have the responsibility to 
to set up the atmosphere. You have to settle in your heart that the house that God has given you is the one that you're going to work with. You have to settle in your heart that what God has given you, the cards that you've been dealt, you still going to win the hand. you got to see that this thing was important because we're going to need to work with your attitude. We need to focus in on your attitude. When my wife gets fresh flowers in the house, when she gets these fresh flowers in the house, you, uh, this flower comes in and, uh, and she sees it and especially if it's a real fresh one she gets all happy and, and her whole attitude changes the whole house changes so many different things happen I love it when she gets fresh flowers this is a big deal somebody say this is a big deal this is a big deal because when you understand and when you settle with where you need to be, you create the home and design it with an ambiance that allows the Spirit of God to come and rest in your house. You're through complaining. You're through being busy. You're through with all the lust. You're opening up your heart so the presence of God can come in. Can I help you? So in order to get this authentic ambiance, the number one thing you've got to do is remove the mask of busyness. Remove it. Forgive whoever you need to forgive so that you don't have to get busy trying to get out of their way. Show somebody empathy for those that just want to be at his feet. Don't get mad at us because we just want to worship him. Don't get mad at us because we want to call out his name. Just allow us. Can you have a little empathy while I give the Lord some praise? Can y'all give him some praise right now? We want to give him some praise. We're settled in this thing today. <laughs> Listen, that's what we got to do. That's the first part you've got to remove. Somebody say remove. The next thing is you got to let somebody help you bring your thoughts under control because you don't have to go stir crazy. You don't have to act a nut. You don't have to lose your mind. That's not a necessary thing because here's the deal. When you let somebody help you, this is a counselor. Somebody need to help you with the mental thought patterns that may get out of control. You may need a coach, somebody to encourage you and push you in the right direction. And you, listen, you definitely need the Lord Jesus Christ present in your life because even while you're sheltered in place, he wants to shelter you in peace. Somebody say sheltered in peace. So the next thing you got to do and the final thing is this, you got to realize, realize that complaining won't change your situation and that the facts are the facts. This is what it is. You're sheltered in place, but with Jesus, you're sheltered in peace. F faith is required because when my faith is properly placed, I have peace because I'm not counting on my ability, the government stimulus check, or my quarantine roommates. I'm counting on God because my future is a product of my faith. My finances are a product of of my seed. My family is a product of my compassion. My fortitude will be a product of my worship. Mary had it right. I don't care what's going on. While I'm in his presence, I will worship at his feet because it's already settled in my spirit. Can somebody, can y'all help me? Come on. Come on and take your place. Our burdens at work. Come on, y'all. Sing it for me, y'all. Come on, hey. I could leave you there but I, but I can't leave you there because see after you remove <laughs> after you remove the business and then after you realize that that it's, it's, a, it's a fact and it's real and that your faith your faith can change the facts and, 
and that it's not going to be a product of anything else, you'll be able to settle in your peace because this part is the biggest part. I can't let you go without giving you this. <laughs> Here it says, the final thing that we must do is that we must repent and focus on the one good part. He says, he says Martha, you're, you're about busy. You got that. Martha, you, you put on the mask, but I can see through you. Martha, you, you substituted me with everything else, but why don't, you, why don't you do the most important thing? Why don't you do the good thing? While you're sheltered in place, why don't you come unto me and I'll give you peace. Peace that passes all understanding. Well, what do I do? I can see Martha probably looking at him because there's nothing else to the story. It's parenthetically slipped right in there and nothing else. Jesus goes on to a whole other thing. What did Martha think? What was she feeling at the moment when she was complaining about Mary? But Jesus told her the most important thing is what Mary is doing. Love it, here you are. Here's the final thing I think we should do. Over the course of time and over the course of what's going on, I think some of us need to repent. Repent, repent. Repent and focus on the one thing, the good thing. <laughs> John, the sixth chapter, verse 27 says, Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. Don't focus on doing and miss the opportunity to worship him while sheltered in the secret place. That's the second one. The secret place. Psalm 27 and 4, while we're repenting, it says, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Repent and praise him for not exposing you and keeping you sheltered in the secret place. How many of y'all want to give God praise for just keeping you and, and not exposing you and all the things that are happening? Some of us, you've been sheltered in your home and God has been working on you and it's been a place where he can cover you and keep you from being exposed. Repent, repent, repent and focus. Repent, repent and praise. And then the final thing is Psalm 26 and 8 says this. It says, Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Have a heart to dwell, <laughs> to dwell. Don't, don't, don't miss the moment to bask in his glory right there while you're sheltered in the secret place of the Most High and you will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Well, what, what was the most important thing in that passage of Scripture? It's saying Mary decided to worship. We've had a great time this morning, but we can't let you go unless you have an opportunity to worship. You can praise and, and praise will produce things in your life, but when you worship, it draws him closer to you and you closer to him. When you worship, it's a whole nother thing. Would you please just grab your family together and would you just begin to worship him right now? Come on, come on, worship it, offer it to him. It's the greatest thing that you can offer to him. Come on team, can y'all help me out? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, Marlon.
worship you Work that, work that, work that. 
something different and we believe that this encouragement has come at the right time Martha was busy but Mary was worshiping Martha was complaining but Mary was dwelling Martha had a mind that was wandering, but, but Mary was fixed. And let me tell you, it's not about being one or the other or better than. It's just about getting right in alignment because the greatest thing, the one thing that was the good thing was to worship him. And his word says that they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. I hope that you had an opportunity to worship today. I'd like to close with this. In the second month of this year, and in the second week, I was in my prayer closet. And while I was praying in my prayer closet, the Lord told me, he says, don't spend anything in the month of April. In fact, it was like he, he unctioned in my spirit for us to go on a fast, my wife and I. And I didn't share it with anybody, but what he said to me was, that don't do anything in April, it will be enough for an entire year. And so I didn't know what that meant, I didn't know what that was going to look like, but I do know this, that I heard God. And so we focused and we focused and we made sure that we didn't do anything. And then I read somewhere in scripture, it was, it was when Moses was telling the people to put the blood of the lamb over their doorpost. And for them to go inside and anybody that was inside would be would be covered the the angel of death would pass over them that's where we get Passover from but before that happened something very unique God says to Moses of which I find very intriguing and, and if we look back on it it's very clear he says to Moses he says before he tells the people to get the lamb or to get the gold and to put the blood before he tells them that he says Moses when this is done this will be your new year. What a powerful word God gave to Moses. And so I'm telling you that you may be in a place where you're sheltered in place, 
but you're in that house and that covering the blood of Jesus is covering you and this is the beginning of a new year for you everything is new your life is new things are going to be new what you were complaining about God is going to cleanse what you were lusting for God is going to prove in your life he's better and what you didn't do he's going to take you to a place of worship and you're going to start beginning to live a life of all things new he makes all things new he makes you new he makes your family new he'll make your faith new he'll make your future look brighter than it ever has before he says that Moses this will be the beginning of a new year and so I declare that when you come out of this <laughs> when we come out of this it's going to be all of our new year come on give God praise for your new year right now in advance in the name of the Lord Jesus receive it in your household receive it in your heart receive it got the lesson today and I believe you did I want to pray with you and pray for you glory to God hallelujah let's pray father we thank you thank you for your word and thank you for the parenthetical insert of Martha Mary and Jesus thank you for showing your compassion through Jesus and I indicate to Martha, Martha, Martha. And thank you for showing us the one thing, the good thing. And it all comes down to worship. And we declare that not only do we love you and we praise you, but we will worship you and give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give God praise for it. Come on, give him hearts, give him high fives. Come on, believe God for that. Listen, I'm going to come back with some appeals so that you'll be able to respond to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, give him praise for it. Listen, beloved, I told you that I would come back with the appeals. As you can see, today was an impactful day. And at the end of the lesson, we got a word from the Lord that said that this, when we come out of this, you will be going into a new year. But I want to let you know that you can enter into a new life and a new year right now. Because for some, you have a tugging that's happening in your heart and you're wondering, what, this, what is this? this? This is the Lord pulling on you. None can come to the Father lest he be drawn. And so if today you haven't said yes to Jesus, it's one of the best decisions that you will ever make. I know it was for me the best thing that I ever did. And so I want to pray for you because if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, the scripture says that you are saved. Additionally, there may be somebody and you're saying, listen, I've already said yes to Jesus, but man, I, I'm not living right. I'm so far from him. And, and I want you to know that today was set up just for you so that you could worship so that you can hear a word and, and understand that when we make room for him, he not only realigns us and puts us back in line, but the good part about it is he doesn't put you in the back of the line. He puts you back in where you left off. And we call that rededication. And then finally, not only do I want to pray for those that want to accept Jesus and those that we want to rededicate their lives, but there may be some of you and you're saying, listen, I need a church to call home. I need a place where that I can partner with them. I can be a part of what's going on. And, and some people partner by giving. And, and thank you so much for your giving. God bless you and God bless your seed. Some partner by visiting and coming and being a part of the worship experience. And, and thank you so much for coming out. And when we get back together for fellowship, man, I want to see you in the place. But then there are those that want to make another decision. The Word of God says in Psalm 91 that those that are planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish and they shall boom. I want to see God boom in your life. And so joining our church, being a part of Amazing Church, we would love to have you. And I know you're saying, join the church? I'm in Australia. Yeah, join the church. Listen, uh, this thing has pushed us into a place where we know that we can connect in all kinds of places. And so listen, if you made a decision for any one of those appeals, I want to pray with you now. So when I pray, I want you to repeat after me, and I want you to repeat fast, all right? Do a good job. Are you ready? Say, Lord God, today... I give you my life for the rest of my life. I believe 
that Jesus is your son, that he died for me and rose again and sits on your right hand. God, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sin, my sins of omission, the things that I just forgot about, the things that I didn't do that you said to do, and the things that I'm aware of commission. Your word says that you're faithful and just to cleanse and to forgive all unrighteousness. So I thank you, Lord. Satan, na, 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 whom the sun sets free is free indeed, and I am free. If you prayed that prayer, come on, give God praise for it. Come on, give him glory for it. Listen, all of those hearts going up, all of those hands going up, that's people celebrating the decision that you made. And they're doing the same thing that heaven is doing. The Word of God says that when one soul comes to Christ, all of heaven rejoices. And so we're rejoicing with you. Come on, give him glory for it. Give him praise. We're so excited and happy for you. God bless you. Great decision that you made on today. Listen, listen. Before you go, I got a few things that I want to tell you before you go. Uh, number one, again, uh, thank you for your giving. If you didn't have a chance to give, uh, make sure that you click the link that's there uh, in the feed or go to our website and or go to our cash app, uh, which is uh, Amazing Church and Give. We want to make sure that you uh, have the opportunity to do so. Uh, also, go to our YouTube channel. Be sure to go to our YouTube channel and click subscribe so that you can watch the broadcast again and or share it. Make sure that you like it and share it. And and, uh, and do so also on Facebook. And then uh, next week, uh, we, I haven't decided on the time, but if you haven't had a chance to go to our Discover Amazing, which is our membership uh, course, and or if you joined our church online, I want you to join me. I want to take you through our Discover Amazing course, which is our membership class. We love you. We can't wait to see you next week. If you enjoy it, if you enjoy it this week, go ahead and give God praise for it with some high fives. We'll see you next week. Be blessed. Have a wonderful evening. Wow, my heart is full right now. What a moment. Yes, a moment indeed. Remember to comment and share this week's broadcast. Let us know where you're watching from. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and like our Facebook page. We hope you're enjoying our worship experience on Amazing TV. And here are this week's observations. Join in with us for our everyday until prayer and fast. We are praying and fasting for our community, families, and nation every day until we see this quarantine lifted. Pastor leads us every day with inspiration and motivation. Dial in daily for our prayer call at 8 a.m. Central Time via Facebook, Instagram Live, and phone. Call and information is on your screen below or visit our website for more information. Amazing family, we are a generous church because our partners give generously to the vision of restoring hope and loving people to life. Yes, and we we have four ways that you can give. You can give using our Secure Give app or visit our website at AmazingChurch.com and click on our Give tab. Use our text to give option by texting your dollar amount to 855-977-1431 or cash app us at dollar sign Amazing Church. Make sure you place your name, email, and what the gift is for in the notes section. We thank you in advance for your generosity. It's your generosity and faithfulness that allows us to continue ministry in these uncertain times. We believe that giving is an essential part of our worship experience. This week, we had the awesome opportunity to honor 200 medical professionals at Baylor Scott & White Hospital here in McKinney with an honor parade. We are grateful for your enormous contributions that you're making to bringing hope and loving people to life. Over 60 of our amazing members participated with signs of appreciation, smiles, and honks. We also provided sweet treats and drinks for the medical staff. Thank you again for your dedication. In addition, we partner with local community center at City Church to provide close to $3,000 to assist in feeding 100 kids who were not able to get daily meals in our community. God bless every partner and every gift given today. We believe God will meet the need of every seat sown, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amazing. If you responded to Pastor D's prayer of salvation, rededication, or you're joining the Amazing Church family today, please let us know by sending an email to admin at amazingchurch.com. We will also drop our digital connect card in the comments. Once we receive your request, one of our pastors will contact you with your next steps. And remember, we are all celebrating with you. Prayer is the foundation of Amazing Church, and we believe every answer is found in the Word of God. And we also believe in the power of agreement. If there is anything you need us to agree with you on, please visit us at AmazingChurch.com and click on our Connect tab. There you will find our prayer button to submit your prayer request. If your prayer request requires faith-filled instructions, a pastor or someone from our prayer team will contact you within 48 hours. 
Don't forget, we're in the YouVersion app. If you haven't already, go to events, search for Amazing, click on our name, and follow along with the message notes. Read the Bible, and the best thing is you can even take your own notes and share it with others. You'll love it. The app is available in the App Store or Google Play. Download it today. To connect with us and keep up with what's happening here at Amazing Church, please be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at This Amazing CH. If you have any questions, please email us at admin at amazingchurch.com. We hope you enjoyed our experience today. We will see you right here next week on Amazing TV. Amazing.